Hey everyone, Demonite here. In this video I want to go over 18 common misconceptions in Borderlands 2 that still keep popping up in the community, some even from more experienced players. Some of these might have already been mentioned in some of my own or other people's videos, but I just wanted to include all of them to have everything in a single video. So let's get started. Number 1. Explosive damage and grenade damage. A lot of people often mix these two damage types up or don't really know what the difference between them is in the first place. First of all, explosive is an element while grenade damage is a type of damage source. Other damage sources being for example gun damage or melee damage. So if you have an explosive damage boost like an explosive elemental relic, it basically buffs all yellow damage numbers you deal yourself. So all explosive weapons, grenades, other items or skills. The item doesn't need to be listed as explosive on the item card, so for example the Cobra gets boosted as well even though it's listed as non-elemental, simply because it deals yellow damage numbers. Grenade damage on the other hand works in a completely different way and doesn't have anything to do with the color of your damage numbers. It obviously boosts all grenades in the game and it also boosts TDO reloads with the exception of most TDO launchers. It can also boost the splash damage of certain weapons. Splash damage can come in any element and if you don't know what splash damage is exactly, I will link a video and a guide about it in the description below. I often see people saying that Axon is good with Torg weapons because he has explosive damage, but that's not quite true. Most Torg weapons simply have splash damage that benefits from grenade damage, which is why he is good with most Torg weapons. Number 2. Gun and Splash Damage I think some people misunderstood how gun damage and splash damage relate to each other. Opposed to what I've seen some people say before, gun damage does always increase all splash damage of guns. Things like grenade damage that specifically boost splash damage are not the only way to increase splash damage, however they are multiplicative to all other boosts. Number 3. Friendly AI and Damage Boosts so some people think that Axton's turret benefits from explosive and grenade damage on Scorched Earth and Nuke. However, that's not true. Friendly AI like Axton's turret or Gage's death trap are considered a second entity in the game with their own damage stats. Regular damage boosts like grenade damage from a skill or explosive damage from a relic are only for yourself. Unless something specifically states that it is boosting the friendly AI like Gage's skills that point out the melee damage for death trap, the damage bonus does not boost it. The damage of Axton's turret can't be directly increased at all. The only way to boost the DPS of the turret is by putting points into sentry and by equipping a gunner class mod to increase the team fire rate since it benefits from this team boost. Speaking of team boosts, number 4, friendly AI and team boosts. Not all team boosts apply to friendly AI. As I said, fire rate does affect Axton's saber turret, but that's about it. Gage's team max health or Maya's health regeneration doesn't apply to either the turret or death trap and Axton's fire rate doesn't affect death trap's shock beam. Zero's crit damage doesn't affect the turret and since death trap melees he isn't affected either. The only thing I didn't thoroughly test is Gage's damage over time boost, so it might boost death trap's DOTs from make it sparkle or the stare if the latter can even proc DOTs, but if it does then the difference is less than not noticeable. Number 5. Rocket Launcher Damage, Rocket-like Projectiles and Launcher Splash Damage A very common misconception about Splash Damage is that Launcher Splash Damage benefits from Rocket Launcher Damage, but as you might have guessed, that is not the case. Rocket Launcher Damage works like any other weapon-specific damage boost. It only boosts Rocket Launchers, but it always boosts them, no matter what Splash type they have. The visuals of a projectile don't change anything either. Just because the projectiles or for example the Carnage look like rockets does not mean they are boosted by rocket launcher damage. The Carnage is still a shotgun and because of this it is boosted by shotgun damage. Now the reason why launcher splash is called that way is simply because it is most commonly found in rocket launchers and also because any launcher splash can be absorbed with an absorb shield to refill your rocket launcher ammo. Number 6. Non-elemental damage and explosive weapons this is another misconception that's mostly related to Axton, which is that non-elemental damage boosts like duty calls boost explosive weapons. As I have mentioned earlier, explosive does count as an element just like any other damage number that's not white. There is an exception to this, which are weapons that are listed as non-elemental but deal elemental damage like the Cobra. 
Because they are listed as non-elemental on the weapon card, they still get boosted by duty calls, while also being boosted by their elemental type, explosive damage in the Cobra's case. Number 7, close enough and ricochet weapons. Many players I've seen, including experienced players, didn't know about this one, so maybe this is something new for you as well. It is often said that weapons that already have ricocheting projectiles because of their special effects or prefixes don't receive a penalty from close enough, the most common example being the Fibber. However, that is not true. For the most part at least, there is a single exception, but it's not the Fibber. Weapons that ricochet on their own will of course always do that on every shot, but with CE they have a 50% chance of heading straight for a nearby target instead of just going in the direction you shot them at. When this happens, they also get a damage reduction of 50% like any other gun. Weapons like the Stalker that can ricochet multiple times can even get a damage reduction on every bounce if close enough procs every time. Another fact about close enough is that it doesn't apply to unlisted projectiles. So for example when it procs on the Sandhawk only a single projectile will ricochet. What's special about the Fibber is that its unlisted projectiles spawn once the main projectile ricochets which means that the main projectile will get a damage reduction from close enough, but all of the unlisted projectiles will deal full damage. Now the exception to all of this is the Madhouse. When it hits a surface it spawns two new unlisted projectiles, which can travel towards an enemy but won't receive a damage reduction, just like the Fibrous unlisted projectiles. However, since these projectiles are unlisted, they can't proc close enough on any bounce after the initial one. Number 8, Gemini and Battlefront. As you know, Battlefront is a skill that increases your damage when your turret is active, and Gemini is a skill that allows you to deploy two turrets at the same time. You can probably already guess where this is going, so I'll jump straight ahead. No, Gemini does not double the bonus you get from Battlefront. Number 9, Pain is Power. The misconception about this skill is that it increases body shot damage, but doesn't change crit damage except on snipers. That's pretty much a result of poor testing and incorrect math. While this would be true if Painless Power was the only additive gun damage buff you have, any other gun damage will result in you dealing less damage on a crit than you would without specking into Painless Power. Number 10, Laser Sight. Yet another misconception about a skill, and this one is the claim that Laser Sight decreases the turret's target tracking speed. This one has been debated for quite a while actually, but any testing I did myself never showed any signs of laser sight slowing the turret down, as you can see in this example of it tracking buzzards. Both the tracking of the target and the rotations it does while switching targets look exactly the same with and without laser sight. Literally the only difference is that it adds accuracy to the turret. I've also seen some people say that it doesn't add accuracy, but it definitely does. 50% is a solid boost, but it obviously won't ensure that every shot hits the target. Think of it as shooting a gun on your own. Adding 50% accuracy through a skill won't make your gun pinpoint accurate either. With all of that being said, laser sight is still not a very good skill. Number 11, health regeneration and fight for your life skills. This is one of those that has been proven wrong multiple times before, but I wanted to include it just for anyone who doesn't know about it yet. So the misconception is that health regeneration skills like Maya Sustenance or Axon's Able will regenerate your health and fight for your life and deactivate skills like Immolate or Last Ditch Effort. That is not true though. The only thing that does cancel those skills are Moxie weapons. In some rare occasions Life Tap can also cancel Immolate, for example if you blow up a car and fight for your life and activate your kill skills, since it works like Moxie weapons. Number 12, Shield Recharge Delay, Cooldown Rate and Reload Speed. This is often just a problem for newer players who are not familiar with how the game calculates certain bonuses. So they would think that for example having plus 100% cooldown rate, reload speed or shield recharge delay would completely nullify the time. But that's not how it works. Having plus 100% of those things would simply cut the time in half and here is why. Those bonuses don't directly affect the time, but instead they affect the divisor of the time. So for example, let's say you have plus 100% cooldown rate on Axton's turret. The turret has a cooldown of 42 seconds, so the equation is 42 divided by 2, which equals 21 seconds. Divided by 2 because without any bonuses it would just divide by 1, which makes no difference. Plus 100% to 1 is obviously 2. 
Having bonuses above that like plus 150% simply means dividing by 2.5. That means in theory there will always be a cooldown delay or reload time, no matter how big your bonuses are. Speaking of cooldown rate, number 13 the cap of cooldown rate. I've seen some people say that cooldown rate caps at plus 100%, but that's not true at all. I already mentioned that plus 150% results in cooldown time divided by 2.5, which is true for all classes and their action skills. I timed it and even looked at the game's numbers. No idea where this misconception came from to be honest. Number 14 Accuracy and Projectile Speed This is another misconception that is very common even among experienced players. It's often said that projectile speed boosts like velocity or accelerate indirectly increase your accuracy since the projectiles spread out over time, meaning that faster speed results in more distance traveled in a smaller amount of time, resulting in less spread out projectiles. But that is not the case. Projectiles actually spread out based on distance and not based on time. Though it is very plausible to think otherwise, since special effects like the conference calls unlisted projectiles are based on time and not on distance. But as you can see here, projectile speed does nothing to the accuracy of a gun. With increasing projectile speed, the spread out rate if you can call it that simply increases as well. Number 15 Roid Shields and Bladed Weapons on Krieg it is a well known fact that as soon as Krieg hits a certain level, the melee multiplier of his buzz axe exceeds the multiplier of a regular bladed weapon. As a result of this, people never use any regular bladed weapon on Krieg even when using roid shields. That is a mistake though since the buzz axe bonus damage doesn't multiply roid damage, unlike the bladed weapon's damage. Number 16 Not re-equipping class mods after respecting. This is another misconception that's pretty old and has a lot of debates around it. First people said that you need to re-equip class mods after respecking because otherwise the class mods won't boost your skills. But then others said that is not true. Both sides were correct however. All of this is simply a result of poor testing again. There are some skills that will always get boosted by a class mod even after respecking, while others don't. And it's not an easy pattern like ammo increasing skills only, basically any skill can be affected by this bug. I only tested skills on Axton, but I know that for example Salvador has some as well. The skills of Axton that won't get boosted unless you re-equip are Battlefront, Duty Calls, Resourceful and Grenadier, possibly even more since I didn't test everything. So yes, you should always re-equip class mods unless you know for a fact that all of the skills you boost are not affected by this bug. Number 17 The B Shield this is something that's especially often questioned in the comments of my speed kills. People ask why I use the B shield if it's depleted or completely swapped out by the time I damage the boss. That's because the B shield only needs to be active at the time the projectiles or TDO weapons are being shot or thrown, not when they hit the enemy, because M damage behaves just like regular gun damage in that regard. And finally, number 18, critical hit damage and melee attacks. I didn't actually realize that this was a misconception until recently when it came up in the comments under a video of mine. Multiple people suggested that the critical hit damage from deception is there to further boost melee attacks if you hit enemies in a critical spot. However while melee attacks can score critical hits, they aren't boosted by any critical hit damage buff. So those were my 18 common misconceptions in Borderlands 2. Let me know if some of these were new to you and let me know if I missed some. Anyway, thanks for watching and see ya everyone.